At the time, 17 years ago, uh, kids and technology was just really coming onto the scene in a really strong way. What I wanted to create was an opportunity for kids to have a different outlet. What we're really fostering is confidence with these kids, and it just happens to be fiber arts and machine sewing that's our medium that we work in. I'm Laura Kelly, and I'm the founder and owner of The Handwork Studio. I think technology is fantastic, but there is just something about creating out of nothing that gives you such a sense of satisfaction and pride. I can tell you the number of times where a parent walks in at the end of class or at the end of camp and the child runs over and just says like, mommy, look what I made. And they're just bubbling from the inside and so proud. And you can't really get that in technology. I walked into the basement of this church that was running this preschool and there were five-year-olds that were stitching little woodland animals and gnomes and they were playing under hand-dyed silks and they were grinding millet for their muffins. And as a parent who was putting my kids into school for the first time, I said, like, this looks like love to me and this is the kind of an environment that I'd like my kids to be um, involved in. I'm a person um, with a background in marketing and I said if I felt this strongly about kids doing these fiber arts, um, I think that there's other parents out there that would feel just as strongly as well. When we're developing our curriculum, we're really building it so that kids can be successful and confident and grow with our program from age five to age 14. So it's not kind of like a one and done situation, but it's where we focus on um, kids being able to be successful and just continuing on and learning more skills and feeling really good about the work that they're accomplishing. I know a lot of my friends now who are in their 50s who stayed home with their kids. Their kids are all leaving and they're, they don't know where to go or what to do. And so I always tell them the story of my mother just as uh, inspiration that they've got a, many, many years ahead of them. My mom went to college for the first time at 48 to be a social worker and then she got her master's degree in her mid 50s and then she hung a, a shingle probably in her mid 60s. That, it, that is just so inspiring to see somebody who went back to a classroom at 48 and I actually was the person that went and sat in class with her for the first time um, just because she just needed some hand holding and the lesson that I learned from that is this notion of uh, it's never too late to get started. I think a lot of entrepreneurs or people who want to be entrepreneurs, they sort of want to wait until the fear goes away. But fear never goes away. There was a quote that I heard once that really resonated with me and it was, everyone is afraid, but it is successful people who move forward in spite of fear. Being an entrepreneur, what it does to you is, is it challenges who you are. And so yeah, of course you want to quit. You always feel like you're failing in some way. But surrounding yourself with good people, believing in your idea, and knowing that we're really helping kids, that's what keeps me going. Fear is the price that you pay for playing the game. And so I think you just have to get comfortable with the idea that you're going to be scared most of the time through the whole journey. <laughs>